Hi, everybody. Uh, as Ido mentioned, uh, my name is Dima Goldenberg. I'm a data scientist in Tinley at uh, Booking.com. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about social network analysis and cover topics from graph theory to applications with Python. And basically, I'm going to talk about the time that I spent in university working with this data. OK, great. So that's me, uh, Dima. Uh, so I just recently found out that on one of my works in high school, uh, the term da data science was written. So I can say that I did the uh, data science since uh, high school. And as I mentioned, I did my uh, master thesis on uh, uh, social networks. So that's where I'm bringing all the knowledge uh, that I'm going to talk now. And uh, I really believe in networking via community. So PyData is an amazing community, and it's great to have you all here. And uh, currently, since 2017, I joined uh, the new office of Booking.com in Tel Aviv, which focuses on machine learning. So a bit of what, about what I do now. So Booking.com is uh, quite an old company in terms of uh, internet, because it's established in 96. And it has around 17,000 employees. Uh, but here in Tel Aviv, we, we are for the last year and a half. So we have, I guess, about this amount of people, 40 people uh, here. And we focus mostly on machine learning and different uh, problems of recommender systems, uh, fraud, and anything else. And uh, what I'm going to talk with you now, as, uh, as I mentioned, is trying to cover all this path of uh, discovering uh, network analysis. So let's start with networks theory. Uh, so you all might know already uh, or seen graphs. Graphs are constructed from nodes and edges. Okay, basically some components that con connected between them in different links, and we're trying to represent this in this mathematical way. So first of all, nodes. Nodes might have different properties. So it could be a person and has a name and have a name. It could be a country, and then it's going to have other properties like number of people, maybe. And it also has a degree. So degree is actually something that the node gets from the edges. And it's amount of edges, amount of neighbors the node has. So let's talk about edges. Edges could be simple connections. So it could be symmetric connections between two people, for example. So I'm, a f I'm your friend and you're my friend. But it also could be that I'm your friend, but you don't know who I am. It happens sometimes. Uh, so that's about the direction. And it also can have a weight. So besides saying how. Uh, do we have a connection or not? It also can say how strong the connection is. So once we have these properties, we can do a lot of different analysis on this data set. So there are different real networks uh, that we can try uh, to convert to this data. Uh, social networks, obviously. I guess it's very easy for you, all of you to imagine this now. Take Facebook, LinkedIn, or any other types of connections of people following other people. Uh, but also virtual connections, okay? Maybe trades between uh, countries, and any other data that we can represent in this way, or even physical things like electricity networks, uh, traffic networks, uh, that actually represent uh, some dynamics over different uh, entities. So th the interesting part of real networks that they're not just doing random stuff, okay? They have some uh, very common properties. So one interesting property is uh, the small world phenomena, or you might hear this about this as a six handshake, six handshakes theory, that basically everybody is kind of connected in the distance, uh, the social distance between each of us, I guess it's even less than two or three, okay? We all know somebody who knows somebody who knows you, I guess. Uh, and another interesting thing is that in social networks, we tend to see a lot of very central nodes uh, with lots of connections. We can say it like Instagram uh, uh, celebrities, for example, but we also have a really, big amount of people with really small con uh, sm amount of connections, and basically we have this long-term distribution, something that we won't see if we we'll just generalize a network randomly. So for example, if we look at the degree distribution, as I said, number of neighbors of each uh, node, if I'll just create a random network, I will just have this normal distribution, okay? Many uh, nodes have the same amount of uh, degree, and the rest are like in the edges, but if we look on real networks, we have a small amount of really big influencers, and then the rest are distributed with this power low long tail. Uh, so that helps us to understand that there are some central uh, nodes that might have more interesting properties. And when we're trying to understand what is central, we obviously already started to talk about degrees. Okay, so number of connections. So if we're talking about the most central uh, node with, uh, with lots of connections, we just look at the highest degree. But if we're talking about other centrality properties, for example, a page rank uh, that, could we, that we can see here, it's not only how central I am, it's also how central are my connections and everybody who connected to me. 
Or maybe we can talk about between a centrality, okay? The nodes that connects between different components of the network, and if we remove it, we'll just create, disconnect basically this network. So its centrality comes from different perspective. And when we start so asking the question, who is the most central in this network, there's no clear answer because it really depends on the applications that we're looking for. Great, so when we cover this network theory, let's start to see how we can build this with, with our data. Okay, so we'll try to do uh, this kind of flow. We'll take some raw data, convert it into Pandas dataset that you, I guess, all supposed to know quite well, and then try to create a network using Network X package. And the thing that we're gonna try to explain is uh, how this happened, how Israel won uh, Eurovision last year. Um, I didn't talk the example of this year from obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, so let's start with the data set. I just Google Eurovision votes, and that's the set set, data set I found. I found an Excel file and loaded it into Pandas. It represents countries and the number of uh, points it received from ad any other country. In general, in booking, we really love countries data, so this data set felt really uh, native for me. And we need to convert this into uh, the data that we can feed to the network. Um, so what I want to do is to create an edge list, okay? List of connections between one country to another country. So all I do is just a melt transformation on this data. Uh, and I create country, okay, receiving country, Israel, source country, Albania, and number of points that give, Albania gave to Israel. Cool, and then I just input this to my network X package. As I defined, source country, uh, source uh, input gonna get source country, target will get target country. Uh, the weight that I'm gonna give to my network is the number of points, because obviously it has some information there. And also know that it's gonna be a directed network because the connections are not symmetric in this case. Amazing, I already have a network. So all we have to do is just to visualize and it's quite simple. I do just network X, draw networks G and that's what I get. Okay, uh, very informative. We clearly understand that Israel won this competition. Uh, so yeah, we'll try to enhance it, enhance it somehow. So the first thing I'll try to explain, and basically it works quite well everywhere where we try to tackle data problems, is trying to divide it and conquer again. So I'm gonna define all the parts uh, separately. I'm gonna define position of our nodes, style and size separately. And nicely, we already have some properties of our nodes, because remember, these are countries and not just some random data. So for countries, I can just give them their physical location, okay, the longitude and latitude, and convert them to this uh, uh, graph. So I just assign them X and Y properties. Uh, moreover, I also have a way to visualize countries because they have flags. So I can just assign to each country the flag of the country and also take the dominant color of the country to represent the edge that are uh, exiting from this country. And then the last part, I want to set size to the countries. So we already have uh, some weight property that's talking about the points. So the size of the country is gonna be the number of points it received and the width of the weight of the uh, edges gonna be the amount of points uh, in the connection. Amazing, so I have all this. It's still not enough to divide and conquer. The next step is gonna be to plot everything in parts. So I'm just gonna run, iterate edge by the edge and just give each edge its property. And I'm gonna do the same with the countries. Don't worry, the, this is just snippets. I'll share with you the code later. So I'll just put all the countries, give them the position, give them the flag and any other properties. And that's the result I get, okay? So first of all, I had to move Australia quite inside Europe because I discovered that Australia participated in Eurovision. Uh, yeah, so you see that Israel, first of all, is quite uh, central in terms of receiving a lot of points and we also compete with Cyprus. And we can also understand a bit of like communities already that are related to the geographical data. And at least we can understand a bit better what happens here, but I'll already give you some uh, spoiler here. Every time you're trying to visualize network data, you need to do some kind of trade-off between how much data do you want to put in your graph and how much information you actually want to get out of this picture, because the more we put, the less we can understand. Uh, and another thing, if we don't really know the positions of the graph, so let's say I didn't know that uh, countries has geographical position, uh, we can still use some kind of uh, algorithms on graph to do uh, some interesting stuff. So for example, I just can set this layout, okay? Uh, some uh, 
basically default layout that we have in uh, Network X that's going to put closer edges, uh, closer nodes together. And what we can see here is actually we can see some communities of countries that vote to each other. For example, Cyprus, Greece, and Macedonia that always vote to each other and kind of understand the geopolitical relations between them. Cool. So we understood how to visualize the network. Now let's see what we can do with it uh, with the data uh, else. So. Let's talk about information. Information is something that flows a lot in the network, especially in social networks, because we spread a lot of ideas, rumors, and everything else. And uh, it also, we love to describe it as viral process, because it just spreads like reality. Okay, if I'm just giving this talk to all of you, suddenly you all know this, but I'm not forgetting it. So we just multiply the number of information we have, and it's going to spread all around the, uh, all around the graph. And when it spreads, we can basically define two very basic, very simple models of how information can spread. So one really common uh, idea to define information spread is the threshold models. So when I'm receiving some information, when I'm hearing about uh, some really cool TV show and I hear it from multiple people, suddenly I have a threshold that says, okay, fine, I have to watch the show now. And I'm going and watching the show after lots of friends recommended it. But I also can have an independent cascade model in which I have some probability to get infected, to get this information from my friends, just because we connected. So one friend told me, and he tried to infect me with the show, didn't work, somebody else, and they do this independently until maybe I'll be uh, infected with this information, maybe not. Okay, so let's talk about a really cool show that I watched lately, Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, but what we're going to talk is about the previous seasons because they uh, were a bit more interesting. And uh, we're going to try to build a network out of the data of Game of Thrones, which is based on the books the good stuff. So how are we even going to construct the network? Because we obviously can understand our relationship between different uh, uh, characters in the show, but we need to extract it somewhere, somehow, and I'm, I'm not going to label the whole show when I watch the videos. So what we can do is actually take the books, okay, and create the relationship, define them by co-appearance of two characters. So if I think if they appear in the same sentence or if they uh, appear within 15 walls distance between each other, uh, we just say these two are connected, and the number of co-appearances also uh, defines the weight of the connection. Then we already can get it into the edge list uh, structure, the, the same one that we just uh, looked before. And then we can convert it actually into network object and try to visualize it and try to run any other analysis on that. So let's do this. That's the network that I built on, uh, I think, top 60-something uh, characters in the, uh, in the books. So we clearly can see central characters as Jon Snow or Tyrion uh, in the middle. And we can say, see some other uh, <coughs> characters around. But I decided to take this example because spreading rumors in this show is something that could be very interesting. And I'm not talking only about spoilers, but I'm also talking about other information. So let's use the independent cascade model. Okay, as I just said, we have some chance to infect our neighbors if we got infected. So this chance we have weight, we have number of co uh, co-appearances between the uh, characters. So I'll just make it make it proportional to the weight of the chance to to the chance uh, uh, to be infected. And let's see what's going to happen if I'm going to try to spread the rumor, or if I'm going to try to hide a secret. So uh, let's say John knows nothing, but then suddenly uh, these two guys came to him and told him a secret. So suddenly he knows something, and we can see, we can try to see where, what can happen with this secret. So I'm going to initialize my simulation. All I'm going to do is just say, hey, okay, this Bren and Sam knew the information at minus one, and now John just discovered it at zero. And then let's try to propagate this information. Let's try to run a few infection rounds and see where it goes. So we'll start with this, okay? John just discovered it. And then the next point, quite more people, bunch of people discover it, and then more people discover it, and then some dead characters discover it, and more people discover it, and eventually we get to the point of everybody we could uh, let this information know discover it. We end up with something like that. Uh, yeah, and information is quite viral, okay? It can spread anyhow. Uh, and we understand that these models can help us really to understand where it goes. But let's try to control it. Okay, so instead of just letting the information spread like wildfire, uh, we can actually try to control it and give it some direction. And that's the application we can talk about, and that's actually what my, my research was about. Let's th think about it from the point of perspective of a marketer, trying to spread 
my product, my uh, marketing message, and trying to give it to as many people as possible. And you all know today that influence marketing is already happens in Inst Instagram, and we can spread rumors. So let's try to see who we can affect in the network with some limited uh, constraints. So for example, I have a budget to give something away, to spread some rumors, and see where it's going to go. So I'm going to take the same network, and I'm going to pick a few key characters in the, characters in the um, in the network trying to spread my information, that's called seeding. And I probably want to pick the most central uh, people in the network. So remember we talked what is the most central? We can have the most central in terms of I'm very connected. We can have the most central because I'm connected to very central other people. And it could be the most central because I'm connecting people from different parts of the world, okay? So we can look at these centrality measures in the network. So in our network we can see that Tyrion, for example, is super connected to many people. But if I'm trying to understand the between the centrality of the uh, of the people, Robert Baratheon and Brian suddenly connect uh, really different areas of the graph. And now I'm going to just use this three seeding strategy of picking the top people from this list, from each of the lists, and try to affect the network to see where it goes. So just to remind you, it's a random process. So I'm going to run this as a simulation numerous times and just see the average result uh, of this seeding. So when I try to run it, that's basically what happens. Within one infection, so if I just pick one random person, and uh, not random, one the most central person in the, in the graph, I can achieve uh, almost 50% of infection of the graph. And then uh, the marginal effect of each additional person that I add to my seeding set is quite uh, monotonical. Okay, we can see some uh, advantage to between a centrality maybe. But eventually picking the top two, the top three most central people, not giving me this extra effort. So I tried to brute force this, uh, this approach and just to pick the best couple I can find. And the best couple got somewhere there, okay, 58. So a bit more better than the best two in any other method. But it took me, in this small data set of 63 nodes, 41 minutes to calculate, and it's really uh, unintuitive. Okay, if I would need to pick myself, I would, would never pick uh, Carl Drogo and Robert Baratheon, I don't know. The connection between them is maybe they both are kings. But they helped me to spread the information across 58% of the network, and the point, my point here is that uh, finding the best city set, sitting set is very hard. It's literally NP hard, okay? And uh, yeah, this is the same guy from Game of Thrones, but from a different show. Um, and that opens a lot of opportunities trying to uh, hack this uh, approach, just trying to kind of develop new algorithms to uh, find the estimations, find something that's closer to the solution. And there are actually lots of academic worlds, but also lots of actual industrial works trying to find the best set of influencers, trying to spread it as much as possible. And we can talk about different real use cases, both for influence maximization, but for any other networks application. So obviously, uh, influence maximization, as I just presented, is great to spread my ideas, to spread my uh, political views, to spread anything. Uh, but I can also look at the network without knowing any, anything else and just discover anomalies, trying to find uh, patterns in the data that are unusual to the regular way. And I can also use it for recommender systems. So we can see that people who are strongly connected share uh, similar opinions. So maybe I can recommend to strongly connected people, strongly connected uh, um, products. Okay, so to recap all of this, um, we can start with some uh, Simple theory from networks, uh, networks theory is just representing our uh, real life in uh, uh, nodes and edges, okay, mathematical representation. Try to convert it into uh, networks in Python, okay, so we have network X, we can get uh, stronger uh, applications for uh, big data as well. Um, we can take the information flow model, so I just presented two very simple models, but we can also try to model something else, like forgetting information and add them to our applications. And eventually we can lot, run a lot of simulations and optimizations to find the best solution in our graph to spread my ideas. So if you like this talk, you might also like, because they are kind of connected, uh, the, these two talks. So Dean is gonna talk about uh, virality and disease modeling uh, tomorrow. And uh, Ridul is gonna give a workshop about uh, actually working with Network X. So if you're interested, you can get a deep dive into that. And yeah, it's basically based on the recommendation system of uh, network connections. I've seen that we're very close in GitLab or we're just sitting somewhere around here. Uh, 
yeah, and uh, also let's stay connected. So yeah, add your me to your network. You can uh, reach out for more information. You can definitely check uh, uh, the codes examples that I used uh, to create uh, this graph. So this bitly is actually going to GitLab. And uh, you can check out uh, Booking AI blog uh, to see about any machine learning work that we do, or just reach out to me if you're interested in working at Booking or any research that we do. Cool, so thank you, and I'll take...